Hey everyone, welcome. Today we're tackling a fun tiling puzzle from Leak Code, Domino and Tromino Tiling. It sounds a bit like Tetris, but with specific rules. We'll break down how to figure out the number of ways to tile a board. Don't worry, we'll go step by step. Okay, so the main goal is this. We have a rectangular board always two squares high and squares wide. We need to completely cover this board using two kinds of tiles. One is a simple domino, a 1 by 2 rectangle. The other is an L-shaped piece called a tromino, which covers three squares. We can rotate these pieces any way we like. The question asks, how many different ways can we perfectly cover the board? Since the number can get huge, we need to give the answer modulo, basically the remainder, after dividing by a large prime number, 10 to the power of 9 plus 7. Let's look at the example where n is 3, meaning a 2 by 3 board. The problem shows there are five distinct ways to tile it. You can use three vertical dominoes side by side. Or, you could use two horizontal dominoes on top of each other, covering the first two columns, and then a vertical domino in the last column. You can also flip that pattern. The other two ways involve using two L-shaped trominoes each, arranged differently to fill the six squares. So for n equals 3, the answer is 5. Alright, how do we approach this systematically? When problems ask how many ways, and involve building something step by step, dynamic programming, or DP, is often a good bet. We can think about tiling the board from left to right, one column at a time. To decide how to tile the next column, we probably need to know how the current column ended up. Like, are there any gaps we need to fill, or is it a clean slate? So let's define DP as the total number of ways to perfectly tile a 2 by I board. Our goal is to find DP. Now, how can we calculate DP if we know the answers for smaller boards, like DP1 or DP2? Let's think about the very last column, column I. It could be covered by a single vertical domino. If so, the first I1 columns must have been perfectly tiled already, giving DP1 possibilities. Or, the last two columns, I1 and I, might be covered by two horizontal dominoes stacked on top of each other. In that case, the first I2 columns were perfectly tiled, contributing DP2 ways, but what about the trominoes? They make things a bit more complicated. Instead of getting bogged down in deriving the complex interactions with trominoes, let's look at the results we know. DP, 0 is 1, the empty board has 1 tiling. DP2 is 1, DP2 is 2, and DP3 is 5. Sometimes, you can spot a pattern or find a known recurrence. It turns out, for this specific problem, the number of ways follows this rule. DPIM equals 2 times DPI1 plus DPI3. Let's check. To get DP3, we calculate 2 times DP DOR, which is 2, plus DP DOR, which is 1. That's 2 times 2, plus 1, which equals 5. It works for the example. We'll assume this recurrence holds. Okay, here's the Python code using that recurrence. First, we define our modular value, that big prime number. Then, we handle the small cases. If n is 0, 1, or 2, we already know the answer. For larger n, we create a list, dp, to store our results up to n. We set the known base cases. dp at index 0 is 1, at index 1 is 1, and at index 2 is 2. Then, we loop from 3 up to n. Inside the loop, we calculate dp, bi's, using our recurrence. 2 times the previous value, plus the value from 3 steps back, making sure to take the result modulo mod to keep the numbers manageable. Finally, we return dp. Let's look closer at the setup. We store the modulo constant, we handle n equals 1 and n equals 2 right away, since they are simple base cases, returning 1 and 2 respectively. If n was 0, though constraints say n greater than equals 1, the answer would be 1. We create our dp array, making it just big enough to hold the result for n. Then, super important, we fill in the first few values, dp0, dp, and dp2 correctly. These are needed to kickstart our recurrence calculation. Now for the main part, the loop. It starts at index 3 because we've already handled 0, 1, and 2. It goes all the way up to n. Inside, we calculate dp using the recurrence dp equals 2 dp1 plus dp3. Notice how we apply the modulo operation. We calculate 2 times dp1 modulo mod, then add dp3, which is already a result modulo mod from a previous step, 
And finally take the modulo of the sum. This prevents the numbers from getting too big at each step. After the loop finishes, DP holds our final answer. So how efficient is this approach? We have a single loop that runs from 3 up to n. Inside the loop we do constant time calculations. This means the total time complexity is directly proportional to n, which we call big O of n, or order n time. That's pretty good. For space, we used an array of size n plus 1 to store all the intermediate dp values, so the space complexity is also order n. However, notice that to calculate dpi, we only need dp1 and dp3. We could actually optimize the space down to order 1 foot or constant space by just keeping track of the last three values instead of the whole array. All right, let's recap. We tackled the domino and tromino tiling problem. We saw it's a classic DP problem. While deriving the recurrence relation involving trominoes can be tricky, we found one that matches the examples. The number of ways for a 2 by n board is twice the ways for n1 plus the ways for n3. Getting the base cases right for n equals 0, 1 and 2 was key. And finally, because the numbers can get huge, applying the modulo operation at each step is essential. The resulting solution is efficient, running in order n time. Hope that walkthrough helped clarify how to solve this tiling puzzle. If you found it useful, hitting that like button would be awesome. Feel free to subscribe for more coding problem breakdowns, or leave a comment if you have any questions, or maybe a different way to solve it. And hey, if you're feeling extra generous, the Boba Fund link is always appreciated. Keep practicing, keep coding, and I'll see you in the next video.